reactivate YouTube. Uh, on average, how many attendants did you have? They, they will come. I I don't know. Depends on the course. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's say it could be 25, 30, but sometimes it's 50. Okay, uh, or sometimes it's 60. I don't, it's very, it's very... Uh, uh, it, it was amazing that you, you wrote me, ah, there are people from uh, uh, Ireland. And just a few hours before, a colleague of mine in Dublin told me, ah, you know, I will attend your lecture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like this. We travel, we travel. <laughs> we have sometimes people even from Pakistan. Wow. We had from Pakistan and, and uh, Russia. And uh, so it's... Uh, Every time, depending on the course, uh, the crowd is changing. So, so yes, so we have to wait because it's still. Uh, so we are on, live on YouTube now, but the, but then after uh, I will start recording and I will put the so I will cut off the beginning of this. Uh, so now we can talk, <laughs> but after I will uh, I will uh, just um, address Cynthia. Cynthia. Are you there, Cynthia? And, and do the students uh, have to do some exams at the end, or they do presentation? They presentation. Do the presentation of some topic or some article. Okay. Uh, do they, do they really interact with me by, because I have to provide some article, some topics, so or if if you if you do provide some article or some topic, will be more interesting because. Uh, okay, so I, I didn't I didn't to this uh, today but i will provide it next uh, yeah. thursday or tuesday something yeah because that would be more interesting if they can yeah, talk to the author and eventually so hello cynthia is cynthia there one second where is cynthia? so cynthia is working also on topological data analysis Hi. Yes, and has, uh, has done some application uh, to cancer problem mm -hmm. to, to, to yes. So on the, on the network of the interaction, protein or genes interaction yeah. in the cancer. Yeah, oh. yeah. Interesting. but maybe now, now is, uh, she, will, uh, she will come back, uh, I think. She's from uh, 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 this. Uh, uh, a, a yeah. strong team working on this uh, topological data analysis is the one in uh, Turin uh, with the uh, ISI with Giovanni Petri. No, I didn't know. Yeah, they also there is, uh, I don't know if he's uh, in England, but I don't know where he is he now. Is uh, Paul Expert is also someone working on um, topological data analysis. Because I know that there was a group in Oxford about this. Uh, um, maybe uh, Paul Esper is in Oxford, I don't remember. But Giovanni name. Petri, which uh, institution? Uh, easy, ISI, in, in Torino. ISI, yes. yes, yes, yes. Uh, Institute of yes, Scientific, yeah. I don't know what, is, yeah, what yeah. does it mean, ISI. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I know that there is also Alan Barra that is from... Uh, Alan, I think he was there, he was a fellow, but because now he's, he's in Marseille. No, he's also in Marseille. See, uh, yeah, but okay. I think he has a fixed <laughs> position in Marseille. Yeah. I think the one in uh, Torino is, uh, I don't know, fellowship something, but it's not... Yeah, a, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, so you see people are coming. So. <laughs> We 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 uh, we have a, a kind of uh, five ten minutes of chat to, yeah, yeah, of to break uh, to break that. So, for example, let's see. Lauren Sell, this is a new name for a newcomer. So, so where, where are you from? Can you speak, Lawrence Lauren Sell? To a people are a little bit shy. Yeah, true again. 
the people that they are new, they can introduce themselves. Do, do not be shy. <laughs> we're, we're here to, to people to make their uh, a larger network of, uh, of researchers and so on. So we, we, you can introduce, introduce yourself. Uh, I, I, see, I see it. Yes. Can you, yes, can you hear me? Ah. Yes, yes, yes. So in fact, I'm working with uh, Timoteo as supervisor, ah. so from the University of Namur, and so I'm also interested in all those topics related to complex networks and also dynamics on top of it. So ah. really interesting. Well, yes. Yes, of course. Welcome, Jean-Francois. Very welcome. Thank you. And I see also we have some Irish. I see some Irish name. So you, you see D probably. I see some Irish name there. Hi, how's it going? Uh, yes, I'm from UCD, uh, Ireland. Hi. Hi. I, I was there. So I, I know Miguel Bustamante there. Ah, yeah, Miguel. Yeah, he yes. sent uh, forwarded this meeting on to me. Yes, but we're very happy to have Irish representatives. Very nice place. I love it. So do you Thanks. know Marbur do you know Marbur Aslani? Um, yeah, I know of him. I'm aware okay. of his work. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, because he told me that someone from Dublin will attend the lecture. <laughs> so maybe it's you. I, I it could be. I don't think I told anyone I was going. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. No, 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 there are six or seven people from Dublin. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> so yeah, in principle. So, so, so yes. So let's uh, wait some longer. So welcome, welcome. So uh, actually, uh, uh, we encourage some people to, to leave the camera open. So uh, Timoteo is now having the impression to talk to the, the, uh, the vacuum, you know, it's nice to see faces, of course, you know, depending on how you feel comfortable, but, you know, we encourage that. And the microphone during the, the lecture, on the other hand, is better to be closed because not to have interference, but we, we encourage to. So we, I've seen some other name. Uh, I, I see some name that is not recognized. Uh, I, I, I ask everyone to put their first name and last name. Yes. So hello. So where, where are you from? Can you identify yourself? I, I see our deep my maybe it's another name. <laughs> Where are you from? Hi, I am Hardeep. I am also from UCD. Ah, that's great. <laughs> so you see to UCD. Yeah. Great. Very welcome. Very welcome. Thank you. Uh, I'm also working on my PhD topic is start skill methodologies in complex network data. So I'm also okay. interested in complex network data. Oh, great, great. Guess I'm still coming. I recognize Marvin is your student, huh? Yeah. yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hi, Marvin. And, and Jose, Jose, Gabi, Gabriel, Gabriella and Corrado are the one working on the Italian and Brazilian data. So uh, another time. Yeah. Jose, where are you from? Where are you? Where is Jose? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Hello, Timoteo. My name is Jose. Oh, Hi. Stephanie. Nice to meet you. He's the yeah. one reading your student. Uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, we're really, we're reading your your article with your, your student. Her name is Hong Lung, I think, Butterman. Yeah. And it's 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 been awesome. It's great. <laughs> we are really interested in complex networks. And he coded, he coded, he's doing the codes to to okay. use that yeah. idea. I hope you will enjoy the lecture. Yeah, so I'll still wait five minutes, people are still coming. So let's say some other newcomers. Yeah. Salma Lamari is from Granada, isn't it? Salma? Hola, yes. hola. Hola, Hi. So it, it's Bien. from Granada. Hello? 
Sí. Yes. You're from Granada, no? Granada? In Granada, sí. Yes. Oh, we're very happy. I, I, I know uh, uh, Maria Victoria. You know, Professor Maria Victoria Velasco, no? From Granada? No, maybe mm, no. It's, no. It's, a, it's a lot of faculty there. No, yeah. Maria, Maria Isabel. Simo. Yeah, I imagine a lot of Maria. <laughs> but <laughs> it, yeah, she's, she's a professor, but she's a slightly in another area. Ah, okay. So, very welcome, Salma. Welcome. Okay. Okay, so. Okay, I think. Uh, we can uh, we can start i think we can start before who will be coming but i think uh, so are you ready to start and yeah. ah yes i would i would like to know would you like uh, people to interrupt during the lecture or at the end of the lecture no no i, I prefer the i don't know if a zoom has the raise a hand option or they just open yes. the micro and ask a question yes, because of, they have uh, Okay, so I, I try to, to follow both my screen and my iPad, but uh, if, if you have a question, please don't hesitate. Ask during the lecture is better than at the end. Yeah, so, so sometimes people can, uh, can use the microphone and sometimes people, they write on the chat. So if you want... Okay, I I I'm not sure the... if I'm able to see... No, the I chat. can read you. Okay, I can you can, okay, you. you can stop me and ask yes. the question. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, great. So... Um, so... Uh, we're, okay, let's start recording before the because I sometimes I forgot to record. Okay, so we are very happy to have Timoteo Carletti with us from University of Namur in Belgium. And well, I have to say I know Timoteo since a long time, since he was a graduate student. So actually, if you can tell the student just a few words about uh, how you end up working in your area, what kind yeah. of path, that would yeah, be okay. very... Of course. Thank you. So thank you. first of all, thank you very much, uh, Stefanella, for the invitation. I think it's a very great occasion to speak with a lot of people you know, uh, all over the world. Is, uh, you see, one positive thing of this pandemic is that we have uh, this kind of <laughs> worldwide lecture so uh, very easily. So yeah, uh, so I just, uh, I have uh, in the second slide my, my CV if you want. So yeah, I just uh, recall that I will speak about complex network and dynamical systems, which is the core of my research. And indeed, uh, the, the last lecture, I will go a bit beyond the network. So I, I is a more general view than just complex network because of the, the research is going quite fast. And so there are new, new directions that are already beyond the network. So, okay, who I am? So I did my PhD in, uh, in, um, in 2000 in, in uh, Paris, both Paris and Florence, so Italy and uh, France. And then I moved back to uh, Italy and then forth to France and then back to Italy, where I spent uh, two years in a uh, Scuola Normale, so Ecole Normale in Pisa. Then I moved to Venice. And so uh, in the first period, say from PhD up to postdoc, I studied dynamical systems, uh, but uh, what is called holomorphic dynamical systems. So you have a complex function, analytical one, that you iterate and you look for a fixed point, is something like this. Uh, if you know the Mandelbrot set or the Julia set, they are all fractals that are obtained using this iteration of analytical function. Then I moved to Venice and there I start to apply my background from dynamical system to uh, biology uh, I, because I was involved in a project is called uh, PACE where PACE is a programmable artificial, artificial cell. So the project was to study the possibility to construct artificial cells that capable to do what you want. So it was a modeling part for me. And then I moved in 2005 in, in Belgium, here in, in Namur. And uh, since then I, I'm working on the, uh, I've been the head of the equipe stand dynamic or the dynamic assistant teams. I've been the director of NAXIS. NAXIS is uh, our Institute for Complex Systems. And uh, uh, so is a, a average size, I think is a 50 uh, or maybe 60, uh, person there, I think half permanent and half postdoc or researchers. Uh, and since I'm in Amur, I open even more my application field, including complex networks, 
um, uh, stochastic, pro stochastic processes. Uh, so, have, so the core, if you want, is dynamical systems, but then I'm moving toward the direction complex system. This means that if at the, at the beginning of my PhD, I study system in one or two dimension, now I'm studying system with uh, 100,000 or billion of, of dimensions. So this is the idea of, of complex systems. So uh, let, let me introduce the motivation of, of this uh, lecture, this series of lecture, and also of, of my research. So I, I can I say, I, we can say that we live in an interconnected world. So uh, you can think of almost any uh, systems that you, you look around you, and you can recognize that it's made by simpler units that interact in some way, exchanging something. So here uh, I copied two books, the one by Barabashi, which is one, one of the father of network science, which is now a 20, 30 years old uh, discipline, but which has now a, a hard core of theorems and results. And then I, I copied the other book, the one by uh, Newman, and also by Abashi uh, Watts. That, uh, and I, I just copied a part of the abstract of the book. Uh, and you can see that in, in both cases, they start with the networks are everywhere. There are any kind of networks. It can be the internet, it can be social networks, genetic networks, or, uh, or friendship network and so on. And they pervade our society. And so if you want to understand how the society behave, we have to understand the network and also the dynamics running on top of, of such networks. So I'll give you a, a definition of network later, maybe next time. So uh, just to, to, to define if you want a network, then a network is a, 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 an object, a mathematical object, where you have basic units that interact. That's a network. So the, the, the units can be a human, as in my picture, where you have uh, this, uh, each person is a, say, a oh, sorry, I have to use this one. So uh, you have um, each person is a, a node of your network, and they interact because I, I draw this kind of link. So you can think that they are friend that uh, uh, interacts each other by exchanging information, opinion, likes on Facebook, also viruses and so on. So this is a, a network where you have a mesoscale where the basic unit in some sense is a, is a person, a human being. But then oh, you can go in a larger scale where now you can think that a, a basic unit is no longer one person, but is a country. And so now you are interested in exchanging, for instance, how the countries do they exchange goods or, or they do exchange uh, wars or, or do they exchange person because of migration. So uh, you understand that the, the notion of basic units actually depend on, on your question. It can be a human or it can be billion or, or million of humans because it depends. Or you can go, sorry, to a very small scale where now uh, you're interested for instance in brain dynamics and now the, the unit are the neurons or group of neurons. So now you have very small units, that, but very many because in the brain you have billions of neurons. So nodes are in the jargon of networks. And each one is connected to the other by synapses where you, they exchange signals. And then now the, 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 the network support actually currents, but this is a memory for us, action, Tools and so on. So you, you understand that the network is very basic uh, or general framework where you can put uh, many kinds of different systems and really what defines the network is your research question. It can be a repeat, single person, million of person, the brain inside one person. All these are different kinds of networks. So, uh, how, so the question is now how to understand this, the behavior, for instance, how can you understand the global exchange market or how you can you understand the dynamics of the brain? So you have to approach uh, more or less. So it's a rough division, but uh, you have the first approach, which is the reductionist one. So you, you, you can think that you divide your system in small parts. Uh, you understand how each small part uh, does uh, work. And then you uh, try to Go, go, go back so to understand the, the, the world. So this is a, this worked very well in case of physics, for instance, all the particle physics, uh, the grand unified theory that explain everything we know in the universe, uh, starting from few 
uh, elementary particles is based on this idea that you can understanding the, the role the functioning of each particle scale up and understand uh, galaxies and so on. Or you have another approach where you have this holistic approach, which is uh, uh, try to understand the system as a whole. It is the core of complex system. The idea really of complex systems is that you cannot divide the system in two parts because once you divide the system in two parts, in some sense, you lose the system. So the idea is that if you want to understand how memory works in the brain, uh, you cannot uh, split uh, the brain into parts uh, up to the neuron and understand how does a neuron work because a neuron, it doesn't have any memory. It's just a cell that sends signals and receives signals. So the idea of complex system is that you cannot split the system because you lose the system. So you have to understand the system as a whole. And that is in some sense is an opposition to the reductionist approach, which is very good in some cases. In other cases, you cannot uh, ask the, the same question. So again, the, the, the approach that you use depend on the research question that, that you have. Okay, so let me now pass to the, uh, the, the outlook of these uh, four lectures. So because I, I don't know your, your background, I, I suppose asking, uh, speaking with Stefanella that you have very different backgrounds. So I divide into more or less four items. Uh, the first item, so I think will be today, uh, maybe a, a part uh, uh, on Thursday. So which is uh, some basic fact about dynamical systems because uh, I don't know uh, what you know about dynamical systems. So uh, I, I will present you some basic ideas. Now you have to take into account that the dynamical system is a, a huge research field with many subfields. So I cannot do everything in one hour. So I did a choice of some topics according to my, my feeling, according to, the, uh, according to what I will need once I will introduce you the network theory. The second point, I will introduce uh, network theory. Again, uh, I, I, I wrote a short introduction because uh, I will not spend uh, uh, a lot of time by explaining uh, all the details about nectar theory. I will limit myself to uh, introduce the basic notion that I will then need in the application part. But uh, I will, uh, I already quoted two books, but I will uh, uh, cite again books and, and papers where you can find more information uh, about the nectar theory. Or if you are interested, just ask a question and I'll try to answer today or the next day. And then I will be able now to now, once I've done the first two parts, to study the network dynamical system. So uh, in the first part, I we will understand how a single dynamical system works. In the third part, we will put together such kind of dynamical system and we'll try to understand uh, the, 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 how the whole system uh, behaves as a whole. So again, uh, we, we try to model uh, a, a neuron, so then we put a lot of neurons together. Uh, so we try to understand how the bunch of neurons will work differently from a single neuron. And then the last part, as, as I told you, will be beyond uh, network theory, because uh, even if network theory is a quite uh, well-established theory, we are already on, say, on the edge, so we are now open into new direction that uh, I will show where you can have several layers of networks. You can have a temp network that evolve in time, so temporal network. You can have uh, uh, stuff that are called uh, hypergraphs, so higher dimensional networks, or you can have uh, also networks where you have, in some sense, a continuous number of nodes, which is called graphons. So these this will be all stuffs that uh, I will uh, show you uh, in, the, in the last lecture. So uh, let me start with the dynamical system part. So uh, as I told you, uh, it's a huge research uh, domain. And uh, so also the number of books available is uh, huge. So here I, I choose three books. Uh, first of all, because I, I, I think that uh, I, I think that there are some echo. Okay, I think they are very good books uh, where the the authors re really well explain the ideas. Um, maybe the one the Jordan is maybe a bit older than the other, or this the the rules also is a very good one. The one by Steven Strogatz I think is more recent. At least there are several new uh, 
uh, publication. So maybe this is the most updated for some kind of, of result that you're interested in. So uh, the, 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 the one by Jordan is maybe more um, theoretical one where you can find proof and so on. The one by Strogatz and uh, Verulz is more, is more a presentation of result without too many proofs, by a lot of exercise and uh, references to, to other books. So I, I invite you, if you want, just to start by looking at, at these three books. But of course, there are really a lot, a lot of books. OK, so let us start. So what is a dynamical system? First of all, you, you have to fix a, a first variable, which is time, which is, uh, let, let us suppose, a continuous variable which is so in R. And then you have uh, a vector X, which, is, which has uh, N components, so a small N. And uh, this vector lives in some uh, ensemble A, which is a subset of Rn, which, where A is called phase space or state space. What does it mean? It means that if I give you all the values of X1 up to Xn, you will have exactly what the system is doing. So where is the system? So you can think that uh, if this is a mechanical system, you need the, the position and the velocity. And once you have the position, the velocity, then you know everything about the system. But once you have the, the law of motion. So what is the law of motion? That you need then a function f, which uh, takes value from a to rn, our space. And this defines the time evolution of the system. So the, the rate of uh, a, a variation of uh, x, of the state space, not that I will denote by x dot or the x over the, the t is the, the notation by mathematicians or physicists is the same. So the, the rate of, of variation is equal to this function f. So let us know that because x is a vector, also f is a vector. So if you want to read it in component, oh, sorry, in component, then you have for all n component of x, you have n derivative for all the components. Each one is equal to one component of f. So x dot one depends on all other variables. And because you have a first order differential equation, because you have the first derivative with respect to time, you also need to add the initial condition. So you, if you think again of a mechanical system, you need to specify the position, initial position, a initial velocity. Otherwise you cannot predict the, the, the evolution of the system, okay? Okay, so uh, uh, I will assume now that f, the, our function, is sufficiently regular to ensure that the, you have a, the existence and the uniqueness of the result uh, of, the, of the problem. So the differential equation plus initial condition, which is called a Cauchy problem in the jargon. What does it mean sufficiently regular? Indeed, it is very low condition. It's enough, if you know it, that f is Lipschitz, locally Lipschitz. It means that uh, more or less you have uh, the derivative almost everywhere, or if you want, if you don't have the derivative, the ratio between f evaluating to close point divided by the, the difference of the point is bounded. So it's very low regularity condition. But this is enough to ensure existence, which is good, but also a uniqueness. And also uniqueness is important because if you have a system and you want to predict the future, you have to have the uniqueness of the solution because otherwise you cannot know which is the good solution. And so I will denote here by the solution by phi, depending of t, time, and depending also on the initial condition x at zero. You can also prove, this is a standard result that you can find in the book that I quoted before, that uh, uh, this function phi is uh, uh, admit the first derivative continuous with respect to time. So it's a function c1 in time, but also depend continuously on x at zero, if, uh, uh, depends on condition on x zero. You can improve the regularity adding other condition, but uh, for the moment, it, this will be enough. Then uh, uh, among all the class of all possible function f, uh, you can do a, a first rough division. The linear one, which is uh, in some sense, uh, the one where you have only monomials. So you, have, you only have variables x, i that uh, are present uh, without any power or any function. And so in this case, indeed, you have your function f is a matrix times your vector x. In this case, you can find explicitly the solution, which is the exponential of the matrix times the vector. Of course, you have to define 
what is the exponential of a matrix. And if you didn't see this before, the exponential of a matrix, you can define it as using, if you want, the definition for the number. So it's the sum or all the integer n of the power of the matrix n divided to the n factorial. So if this series converges, then this, this is true if A is a, as a finite norm, then uh, this uh, uh, function, this uh, formula for phi define this exponential is the, this, the definition if you want. The other case is nonlinear no one. It is uh, all the other remaining cases. So where once you have uh, the component to some power, the component with the logarithm, sinus, cosinus, uh, uh, and so on. Okay, and of course the more interesting case is the nonlinear case because it's the one where you don't know exactly the solution or you have to work a bit. Even if in the linear case, I will show you later on, you can still have some surprise. Uh, then uh, the, the last division is between autonomous versus non-autonomous case. What does it mean? So in the non-autonomous case, the function f depends, doesn't depend on time. So if, uh, if you think of forces, the forces are constant and only depend on say position and velocity, but they will not vary in time. Or you have the non-autonomous system where the function f also depend on the, 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 the time. So even if you don't change position and velo velocity, because the time evolve, your force will also change in time. Okay. Of course, the non-autonomous case will be more difficult. Uh, while the autonomous is a bit simpler. So I will concentrate mainly on the autonomous one, but we will also see some result about the non-autonomous in, in the, the following. Okay. Alors, uh, just uh, one slide uh, about discrete time, because in many applications, of course, time is, con is a continuous variable in the real life, but you can also, you can only have measurement, say every day. If you study the population of, uh, animals, also human beings, you cannot think of studying with a, a continuous time. You have to do measurements that are done, say, every hour or every day. So in some, in some cases, it's interesting to study the dynamical system where the time is a discrete value. So it's, it's a mistake here. Of course, it's not R, but it's uh, N, the integers. And again, you have uh, your x that define the phase state, you have still your function f, but now the evolution is just given by a map. So the new position, the new x at a time, if on the step n plus one, is the application of f on the present time, so on the present step n. Okay, and again, you have to provide the initial condition. So this can be done, I say, it has been done, there are very interesting results, but uh, because you have to make a choice. So it can be studied, but uh, we will not do it because we don't have time. So I think it's interesting. I, I really think in many cases, the only way to do because uh, the continuous time is not what you have. Also, if you think uh, of a data from uh, COVID, which is a very uh, a very large domain of research in this, uh, this month, but you only have measurement every day. You cannot have uh, the number of COVID patients or of COVID death every second or every millisecond. And so you have to do a dynamical system study based on the fact that you have discrete time. You can try to interpolate, but the dynamics can, can be different. So it's interesting, but I don't have, I don't have, I don't have time to do this uh, in this, uh, this lecture. Okay, so uh, because now I'm interested in the case where f is a nonlinear function, uh, in principle, it's very difficult to find the solution. So I'm not able to write x of t is equal some formula where you have the time evolution of, of, this, of x. And so the first thing that you can do is to find equilibrium point. So you have to find the point x star such that f is zero. It is important because if you remember that uh, x, point, x dot is equal f of x, if you evaluate this on x equal x star, then this is zero. And so if you remember your lecture on uh, calculus, if you, have, oh, sorry, if you have a function whose derivative is zero, sorry, the function whose derivative is zero, then uh, this function is a constant. And this means that the x of t is a constant. So you have a constant solution. So if you find an equilibrium point, so a point x star, 
So you already find a very special class of solution, the one that are stationary, so the, the one that do not evolve in time. Okay. Alors, so then the, the next point is that once you have a, a stationary solution, you would like to know what happens if you start close by. So if I start close to my equilibrium X star, will I remain close forever? Or at some point, will I escape away? And so this is the question about the stability of this equilibrium point. And there are few definitions. The first one is the one uh, due to Lyapunov. It is called stability by Lyapunov. And the idea, I will do a, a drawing in the meantime that uh, I, I, will, I will read it. So the idea is that you have your, solu your, sorry, your X star, which is my uh, black dot. This means that uh, what, whenever I fix an epsilon, so this is my epsilon, my, a, a small disk of radio epsilon, then there are a second disk, which is uh, some radius, sorry. Delta, maybe it's larger. And this implies that every time that I take a new solution starting from uh, this larger set, then the orbit is confined in this smaller one for all the time. Okay, so this means actually that, uh, okay, theoretically, you know that uh, your system should be in X star in equal equilibrium, but once you do a measurement or once you put uh, physically your system in some initial condition, it's impossible to fix exactly X star. But so if it's locally stable, actually it doesn't matter. If you do a small error, the system will remain close forever to this X star. So you will not appreciate the fact that you are not actually to on, on the equilibrium point. You can ask even a bit more, and you can ask that actually the system is asymptotically, sorry, asymptotically stable. That means that, okay, if you start close by, so if you start delta close to your initial point, then you can ensure that your system will converge to the equilibrium point. So you think uh, of uh, a small ball uh, and uh, you put uh, a, a small, uh, I don't know, something that uh, uh, a, a, a balls that uh, roll on these balls. But of course, the stable solution is the one on the bottom. But uh, even if you start close by, this, these balls will uh, uh, wrap around and because of the friction at some point we stop close to the equilibrium point. Okay. So now that you have uh, this idea of stability, so remember the idea is uh, uh, for all epsilon that exists delta or it exists delta depending on X star. So every time that in mathematics you have uh, that exists is hard to do because you have to prove that this stuff really exists. So it is better to have some say practical condition that you can check directly on, on your system. As this is what this can, this can be done with the, the linear stability analysis. So again, you take your equilibrium point X star, which is so the zero of your function F, and then you compute the Jacobian matrix. The Jacobian matrix, so it's defined here, so it's the, the matrix J, I, J, uh, was component, so I, J is the derivative of the component, of the eth component of F, with respect to jth component of, of the vector x. And so if you want, this is the generalization of the derivative. Once you have a higher dimension, a dimensional uh, so a vectors, a, a function of vectors, then the Jacobian is the good definition for uh, the, the derivative. And once you have this Jacobian matrix, then you can compute the eigenvalues. So uh, just remember a bit of uh, algebra. You have to solve the equation uh, determinant of j of x zero minus lambda times identity equal to zero. So this is a, a oh sorry. So this is a, 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 a polynomial equation of degree n in lambda, and so if you can find n different solution roots, so you have the n eigenvalues. It can be that some eigenvalues can be double because they are either uh, is a, a multiplicity larger than one. So, but they're technical they'll taste, but they can be also under in this case. And so once you have the uh, eigenvalue, so the, the root of this equation, then it is to prove that if all the real part of this eigenvalues are, so I have negative real part, then your equilibrium is asymptotically stable. So this is a, a really practical uh, uh, application because you, have, you found a point, which is the zero of some function, you compute several derivatives, so a matrix. 
you compute the root of this uh, equation. They can be hard, they can, do, they can be done the, numerically. In, in general, the, the roots are a complex number, even if uh, your matrix is real, because once you have a polynomial with co real coefficient, you can have a complex root. But then if the real part of the roots are all strictly negative, then you have something which is stable. So it is a very good, a very simple to, to apply. So a, a, a small idea the how this uh, proof works. So let me do the proof in a one dimensional case, just is easier to write it. So I have this, this is my, my equation, x dot is equal f of x. I remember that if f the x star is equal to zero. So I define a function of u, which is x minus x star. So it's the distance with respect to the equilibrium. And then I, I would like to write my initial equation is one in the new variable u. So I just have to derive it make the derivative of u, so which is u dot is equal to x dot minus x star dot, so let me write it, but x star is a number, so is, is a constant, so its the derivative is zero, so I, I have that the, the derivative of u is the derivative of x, which is 2 f, uh, instead of writing of f of x, I will write as a, a u plus x star, so x star plus u, Okay, up now is exact, is correct. And now I assume that u is small. So I assume that because I'm interested in the local stability, that I start close enough to my uh, equilibrium point uh, x uh, star. And so if u is small, I can develop f in Taylor. So because I'm here only, uh, I'm on one, one variable, I use a standard Taylor, Taylor series, but if you have an higher dimension, you have to use the Jacobian. So the multivariate expansion. And so this gives me f of x star plus f prime evaluated in x star times u plus dot dot dot, which is say a square term in u square. Okay. But if you remember that uh, f of x star is zero, this tells you that u prime, so the, the displacement with respect to the equilibrium is equal to f prime of x star times u plus something is more. And so if, uh, so let me write this just some constant times uh, u square. So if uh, uh, now you assume that f prime of x star, so because the system is one dimensional, uh, x f prime is real. So I can say if this is more than zero, then you can take u sufficiently small such that, uh, so let's say call smaller some delta, such that f prime of x star plus delta is also negative, uh, plus delta plus c, sorry, is also negative. And this shows you that uh, all this stuff here can be taken, say, let me call this is some, um, so this, uh, sorry, so this is equal to some theta, which is smaller than zero. And so this means this, this is more or less some theta times u. Because in some sense I said, okay, u square is small, so is I can write it like delta times u, and so delta is uh, with c is put in theta, and so you have the equation u prime is smaller or equal the than theta u, and because theta is small, you know that u is going to zero exponentially, so this means solution is u of t is exponential theta t times u of zero, and this goes to zero as t goes to infinity. And so this show you that if you take the, the, the only root, so the, the derivative is negative, and if you start close enough to the equilibrium, then you will reach asymptotically the equilibrium. A similar proof can be done in the general case where you have several dimensions, you just take norms and take the largest eigenvalues and so on, but the same proof can, can be done. So, I will skip uh, this part. So just now a, a small remark about uh, a linear system because I told you a ah, linear system, it's very easy. Okay, it's not so 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 true. So uh, let because it, there are some kind of matrices called non-normal matrices, which are defined by this equation. So a matrix is called non-normal if uh, it doesn't commute with transpose. So if you take a time transpose a is different from a transpose time a. So this implies that uh, this matrix cannot be diagonalized with an ortho orthogonal vector. So you can diagonalize it, but 
the, the, vec the eigenvector will be not orthogonal. But these are very interesting consequences on the dynamics. So here I'm studying a linear system, which is this one. So x dot is equal time a times x. And I study the two norms of the vector. So if you want uh, the, the square of the mass or so whatever is your vector. And I draw in, in, the, in, the, in the figure two cases. The matrix A1 is a diagonal matrix with the uh, eigenvalues minus one and minus two. So because of the theorem that I just show you, you know that uh, uh, the equilibrium the, this case is zero because it's a linear mat is a linear system. So the equilibrium is asymptotically stable. And indeed you reach zero by using the, the largest of the eigenvalues minus one. Indeed here in this plot in the inset, I show you the log of the norm. And you see that this line is a slope minus one. This is the theorem that I just show you. Let's now consider the matrix A2. The matrix A2 is not uh, symmetric because you have uh, one number 10 over here, but uh, he has the same spectrum. The game values are again minus one and minus two. And indeed, you expect that for T large, uh, again, zero is stable. And so you reach zero with the slope given by minus one. This is true. But if you look what happens at short time, you see this uh, jump. So this means that if you are looking at your system, which in this case linear, for short time, even for if for a long time it will, it will go to zero, for a short time it will be away from zero. And, and so this is this is, is a problem because if you if this time here is a, as the same size, almost the same size as the size of your system, the, the lifetime of your system, you are you know that in principle you you will reach equilibrium, but in practice you never reach it. Moreover, what is important is that if this system in reality is a nonlinear system and then you linearized and you want to use the previous theorem that say, ah, I compute the spectrum. If the spectrum is a real part negative, then I converge to the equilibrium. This is true, but this depends on how large you take the initial condition. Because if you take initial condition, which is, which is not so close to your origin, you will have this excursion. And then you lose this condition that was some is here that you have to start really close to initial condition, okay? And so, if you have no normal matrices, in some sense, you can say, okay, the, the equilibrium remain stable, but the basin of attraction, so the set of points that will be attracted to this point is very small. It shrinks almost to zero. But again, I remember, if you just compute the spectra of these two matrices, they're the same spectrum, minus one and minus two. And so from a simple spectra analysis, we will not recognize anything different. It's only the dynamics that we tell you the difference. And just to add some jargon, uh, alpha or alpha is called spectral abscissa. And so it is the largest uh, eigenvalues of the matrix A, while omega of alpha is called numerical abscissa, uh, which is the spectrum of the uh, admission, the name, so A plus A transpose, so the, uh, the symmetrized version of your matrix A. And uh, this is called reactivity. And uh, what is uh, interesting is that in biology, mainly in ecology, this idea of reactivity is known since a long time, since a really long time, because they were aware that in many applications in biology or in ecology, the matrix A is not symmetric. So they are, they are dealing with no normal matrices and they, they observe this kind of jump away from the equilibrium before settle eventually on, on, on the equilibrium. So this is an important point that even linear system can have something to tell you about the dynamics. Okay, so once you have the, the equilibrium, you can be some, sometimes can be happy to also have a solution. So you can find really a function uh, psi that depends on time or also on X not initial condition, which solves your equation. So once you are able to find this solution, then you can ask the same question. Is my solution stable or not? And the answer is given by this uh, result due to Poincaré, which is called orbit orbitally stable or Poincaré stable. Uh, again, I draw just a picture. The idea is that here, here is time, this is your function of psi over t. That is that whatever you fix a threshold epsilon, something like this, then you can find, I don't remember the curve for delta. So you can find a delta, so a tubular 
uh, neighborhood of your solution such that once you start inside this tubular net, so you start close uh, delta, so it's close start, then you will eventually remain bounded close say, to your solution, to your nominal solution at most epsilon. So if epsilon is small, even if you don't start exactly on your solution psi of t x zero, uh, indeed your the, the solution that you get is really close, is epsilon close. Okay. Uh, a particular case of uh, uh, time dependent solution which is interesting is the case of periodic periodic solution because uh, there are many examples of solutions that are periodic in time because uh, of cycles in the system. If you think of humans, we have the night and day cycles, it can be bacteria that also have cycles. So cycles are everywhere in our life, in, in the physics. And so it's interesting to study the periodic solution. So again, you, you should be happy or, or strong enough to prove uh, the, 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 to, that you have this so solution Psi, which is a, a solution which is T-periodic. So you have this capital T, which is the period, such that once you compute the solution at time T, small t, and you add the period, you again find the same function. Uh, in this case, what can be done? You can build what is called the Poincare map. So you, you work in the n-dimensional system, which is your phase space, where you have this solution uh, psi. Then you have to find a n min minus one dimensional manifold, which is transverse to the flow. So if I try to do a picture, which is something like this. So assume that I am dimension three, so here I draw a two-dimensional manifold, so a plane or something like a plane. So here is my solution that cross transversely. So this angle over here is positive. Okay, so this is the solution uh, C T X naught. And so this is my V. And so this uh, N minus one dimensional manifold transverse to the flow. It, it means that you have this kind of plane of hyperplane of manifold that is crossed from one side to the other side by the solution. Okay, and again, so once you have this, this plane, uh, you can, so because your orbit is indeed periodic, after some period, the orbit go back, uh, sorry again, so it will cross again your, 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 uh, your plane or your hyperplane. So if you start from one point that I call x prime, then you end up af after a period with a new point is called x second. And this is the Poincare map. So the Poincare map is the map that depends, of course, on the system, but also on the uh, manifold V that you choose, that to each point x prime close enough to the x zero, because of, this is only true locally. You cannot have, uh, it's very difficult to have a global Poincare map. So given any point x prime close to x zero, you will have a new point uh, x second. Okay, so this is the point carry map. And this is important because now you can prove the stability of your system by proving the stability of point carry map. Indeed, you can prove that uh, the map is, 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 uh, is stable. If uh, again, for every epsilon, you, you can find a delta such that if you start close enough to your initial point x at zero, then once you iterate the map n times, then uh, the iterate are close to the initial point. So you notice that because uh, your map, your, your solution is periodic, you have that c of t plus capital T is equal to zero. This means that once you apply the Poincare map of on x naught, you get x naught because by definition is a fixed point of the map. So this means that once you iterate n times a point which is close, x prime, then you, you remain close forever. Uh, you can also have this asymptotic stability, which state that, okay, you are close forever, but moreover, you converge to this point, okay? And then uh, indeed you, you can prove that uh, this uh, stability can be uh, pushed back to the continuous flow. So all the flow will converge to uh, the, the orbit, the reference orbit, the periodic orbit that you have. Okay, once you have a periodic solution, you can also use another theory, which is the theory that do, done by Floquet. Uh, uh, so let me explain the theory in the case of linear system because it is a bit easier. In the nonlinear case, you have again to linearize 
uh, you can some trouble, but there is a theorem by um, Antonov uh, and uh, Witt, also called Lyapunov Antonov Witt theorem, that tells you about the stability of a nonlinear system with a periodic solution. But I, I will present in the case of a linear system. So again, I have a linear system, so my function f is indeed just a matrix, but now it depends on time. And this matrix A depend on time periodically. So it's a matrix that uh, after capital T takes again the same value. Okay, the theorem by Floquet say that then once you have this system, you can find a matrix B and a, a matrix, so B is a constant, and you can find a matrix S which depend on time. So it's a function matrix, but which is periodic and invertible such that the solution can be written as S times exponential BT times X zero. And so this is important uh, because being S periodic, you can understand that uh, everything is important is captured by B. Why this? Because if I assume now that you are interested in studying a T at, uh, uh, sorry, X at T plus capital T, but this is equal by definition of S and T plus capital T time exponential of B. We already saw the exponential of a matrix uh, if, uh, times T plus capital T X naught. But then remember S is periodic. So this is equal to S of T. Here you have uh, B uh, T. Uh, for, I, I didn't prove it, but you can prove that for exponential of matrices, the same rule apply that for exponential numbers. So the, exponent, the exponential of the sum is the product of the exponential, because in this case, the matrix is the same matrix. So you have times exponential b t x naught. And then you, you recognize that this part here, sorry, this part here, I don't know why I, when I touch it disappeared my, my right. So this part here is almost the x at time t. And so everything that really matters is how this exponential a exponential b t it behaves in times. Okay, so this can be made more rigorous. Ah, okay, uh, okay, I can give a sketch of, of the proof why this is the case. I forgot. So and moreover, you have this expression for s. So let, let, let me show you this why this is true. So let me write again, you have this uh, equation and then you, uh, you, you write X, you make a change of variable uh, with, from X to new variable Y using this matrix S. And I will show that this matrix S uh, will satisfy this equation and, and, and the new equation for Y will be Y dot is equal to B times Y, where B is the matrix that I showed you in the slide before, okay? So I'll do this, but you take the new equation linking X and Y, you differentiate. So you have X dot is equal S dot times Y plus S time Y dot, because I remember S is a function of time. Then instead of X dot, you write A time X. I, I just uh, didn't write uh, depend on t each time, but of course, uh, S and I depend on time. And then uh, uh, you replace X by S, Y. So you have A, S, Y. And then if I conclude the first line, you have S dot times Y plus S. And instead of Y dot, I put B, Y. And so if you put this for all Y, because this is true for, for all X, you have a linear system, then you, you can recognize that S dot should solve a s minus s b which is the formula that i showed before but now because uh, y dot is equal b y we we already know sorry the solution is y of t is equal exponential b t phi times y zero and then if you insert this information in the in the link between x and y this tells you that x of t is equal s of t times uh, exponential b t y zero, but in this case, y zero, you can write x zero. So this proves in some sense, the first part of the Floquet theorem. The, the, the important part is the next one where you, you, can, you can prove the stability. Indeed, as I told you before, 
this matrix exponential bt, where t is the period, is the main part of, of, the, of the solution. It is called C, which is the monodromy matrix. So is the matrix that you obtain once you evaluate the solution after, after one period. And then the eigenvalues that I call rho of this matrix C are called characteristic multipliers. And they are related to the eigenvalues of B, they call mu, that I call characteristic exponent. And then you can prove this theorem due uh, under of a width that tells you, which is very similar to the one that I showed you before, that if all the real part of the uh, characteristic exponent the mu are negative, then the orbit is stable. So this is important because now again, if you are able to compute the matrix C or the matrix B, in principle, it's quite hard, but you can have estimate and so on. Then if you, are, if you have these matrices B and C, B or C, you can compute the spectrum. And so you can conclude about the stability of the periodic solution. And a similar theorem holds true for the nonlinear case. So the theorem by Andonov with Eliap. Okay, uh, just a few notes, and then I think we are almost done. Uh, the first note is that you always, always have one eigenvalues, one characteristic exponent equal to zero. Because this tells you that along the direction of the flow, you will not change anything because you are moving along the flow. So neither you expand nor you contract. So you know that you only have one eigenvalue small, uh, equal to zero. Then uh, the, there are some way to compute S or, 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 um, or Y that I tell you, it depends uh, uh, case by case, problem by problem. But what is important is that you have this uh, relation. So the product of the eigenvalues of C are the exponential of the integral of the trace of A. So maybe a complicated formula, but if you consider in the case N equal to two, so only two dimension, because you know that the one eigenvalue is a zero, so this means that the rho is equal to one, but using this formula, you already have the second one. And so if you, the trace of the, of the matrix is simple, just compute the sum of the diagonal elements, you do an integral. And so if, it's, if this is the result, is more than one, then you have stability. If it's larger, you have instability. So in some cases, I, I repeat, it can be quite easy to, to prove the stability or the instability or the solution. Um, okay, uh, I don't know, Stefanella, how many minutes do you have? Yes, Is... yes you, you have because we start late. No? Ah, okay, okay. So I have still a few slides but uh, interrupt me when uh, it's time to stop and I will I continue next time. So just a few, few remarks. Uh, among the periodic solution, the limit cycle are the one that are more interesting one. So it's the same difference that if you have an harmonic oscillator, something that you may be very well known, there are a lot of, of periodic solution. Indeed, all the solution are periodic, so that's too much. And so in some sense, it's more interesting to have isolated periodic solution. So a periodic solution, uh, such that in a neighborhood, this is the only one. And so there are real application in physics, biology, and so on. However, find limit cycles is difficult. Uh, there is a, a, a still open problem uh, written by Hilbert in the more than one century ago. It's the second part of the Sistine Hilbert problem, which is determine a num an upper bound of the number limit cycle in a very simple case, polynomial differential equation in the two-dimensional plane. So it's a really very simple framework. You have a plane, so you have two equations, x dot is equal something and y dot is equal something, and the functions are polynomial. So almost the simple st stuff that you can do. And so to know how many uh, limit cycle do you have, is still an open problem. And you, will, you would like to have this number or this bound in terms of the degree of the polynomial, of course, or the coefficient. The only thing that we know, which is already uh, 30 years old, is that this number is finite. So it's uh, due by Ilyashenko and the Cal, so in 91, 92. And so we know that this number is finite, but we don't know exactly how many uh, uh, limit cell you can have. Uh, this theorem is a proof by existence. So I think the bound is uh, exponential of exponential, exponential of n, so it's not a real bound. In some cases, we, we, we expect the bound to be linear in N, but we don't have proof. So uh, the, 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 the question or, or, or the, the, the issue of finding limit cycle is a really difficult task, of course. Uh, so 
but of course, it's one really interesting one. So I think it's worth studying, uh, what, worth pu putting uh, energy to try to understand the li limit cycle, how many they are, how do they behave, and so on. Okay, so we start with the, the simplest example, uh, equilibria, so stable, stable solutions that are just point. Then we pass to solutions that they vary in time initially in any way, but then we start to the periodic one and now to limit cycle. And so, uh, okay, sorry, I, I forgot this one. So what can be used to, to uh, find limit cycle? So if you are in a plane, you can use the poincare bendixson theorem. Uh, I don't know if you are aware of this theorem. It's a very beautiful one, which in some sense say the following. So let me draw a, a plane. The theorem say, if you are able to prove that the existence of a region, so the, this annular region, which looks like an, an annular one, where f, uh, the, so the function of which is your x dot is equal to f, is always different from zero, and such that the flow never escape from this region, then you can prove the existence of at least one limit cycle. So this is a result by Poincaré Bendixson, which is uh, in some sense the only one that you can use in the plane, but of course it's difficult to have a bound on, on, as I told you before. Uh, the, um, mm, well, let's see. So the, is it really important is in two dimension and the plane. So the same result is not true, for instance, on the torus. So just to show, or if you take a three dimensional space, the, the important point is that in the plane, a closet curve divide the plane from in the inner part and the outer part. And this is not true for in the torus. So in the torus, you cannot use the poincare bendixson theorem. The other possibility in general, so in, in higher dimension, is to, to use the Brouwer fixed point theorem. Well, what does it mean? It means that uh, you uh, suppose that you have again your T periodic solution. And so this means that, so you have your initial space. I don't know, let me draw as a plane, but it can be in any dimension. And suppose that you can find a set such that after a period, is it, so, so this is my set, is it mapped into inside? Okay, so you have an application, which is the Poincare map, that put uh, your initial set in into a smaller one, which is containing the previous one. Because this map is continuous, is even more continuous, so, but it's continuous by initial condition, then you can use the, the, the Brouwer fixed point theorem that tells you that you have a continuous map that, uh, that maps a, a set into itself. So is if you want a disk into a disk, then you have at least a fixed point. A, a fixed point of the point carry map is a periodic orbit of the system. So this is the other possibility to prove the existence of a periodic solution or a limit cycle using this Brouwer fixed point theorem, but again, you have to prove the existence of this set, which is mapped into itself after the period. So it's not so easy in general. Okay, so the, the last, okay, okay. I think I, I will not finish today for the dynamical system. I put too, too many stuff. Okay, uh, uh, one interesting uh, uh, example of uh, uh, limit cycle is the one provided by the Van der Poel oscillator. So I don't know if you are already aware of this. So you have the second order differential equation and uh, which now depends. Uh, so the, if, you, if you think this, it can be uh, an oscillator, but where the friction term is not a constant, but depends on the position. So, so this is the velocity if you want. Uh, if you put these terms equal, equal to one, then you have a, a linear oscillator. Something is, is damped or excited. But if this part depends on, uh, on the state, you have a nonlinear damping. And let us study the case where mu, the, the parameter is small, because you can have the regime where mu is large. Okay. And then in this case, you can change coordinate. Here the coordinate are called Leonard coordinate by the, the work by Leonard. And the coordinates following, you define x dot is equal to this function. What is this function? It's just the integral of one minus x squared. So here is x because the integral of one uh, minus x cubed divided by three is the integral of minus square. So you put here, so, so if you think as, a, as a, 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 a potential, here you put the derivative of the potential. And then you, you, you take off y. So this is my new equation for y. 
uh, for x, sorry, uh, for y dot, I put y dot is, is equal to x. And if you do this, then you, you can prove uh, the existence of a limit cycle. How you can do this? Okay, you can compute the zero isoc line, which is uh, the set of points for which uh, this function f is so, uh, which is, if I, okay, I'll put here. So this is the set of points where this function vanishes, and so is the where the x dot is equal to zero. So if you draw on this, uh, this is my face plane, is the point where uh, the, uh, so x is zero, so you only have the, vert the vertical component of your vector field. So along this curve, so I hope you can see it, the vector field points vertically. Up and down depends on the sign of x. So if x positive, because you have y dot positive, then it points upward. While if uh, uh, x is negative, because x dot is x, it points downward. And then if you look a bit how, how it works close to the origin, you can compute again uh, zero, zero, it's the only equilibrium, so my x star previous. You can compute the Jacobian, easy, just compute the derivative for x prime with respect to x and evaluate it in zero, then compute the derivative of uh, uh, x prime with respect to y, evaluate in zero, so it's minus one, and so on, so you get this matrix. You can compute the again values that are given by this number. And then you can show that if you are close enough to the origin, and if mu uh, is, uh, um, is positive, then you are, you are escaping from the origin in such kind of spirals. You can see this because if, uh, if I remember the theorem that I showed before, the real part of lambda is uh, mu over two. And so if uh, this part is positive, then the equilibrium is unstable. And so you are spiraling out to from the origin. While if the real part of lambda is negative, so mu is negative, then you are entering into origin. So the origin is stable. Okay, so in this case, I have a stable focus, while if uh, mu is positive, I have an unstable focus. And then if you, I, I did this uh, plot using MATLAB, but you can do using whatever uh, software you like it. And then you can see that from the inside, you are spiraling outward, but from the outside, you are spiraling inward. And so by poincare bennigsen theorem, you can prove the existence of a limit cycle that is the orbit that is more or less plot here. Okay, so this is not a proof, it's just a picture, but you can prove that the van der Poel oscillator has one, a only one limit cycle, which is stable if mu is small enough. So smaller than two in absolute value. Okay, uh, so in, we can say that a, a limit cycle was born from a bifurcation because if mu is negative, uh, you have a stable point and uh, you are attracted to the origin. While if mu is positive, you have the origin which is unstable, but the limit cycle was born. So uh, now I, I was supposed to start to speak about bifurcation, but it's like 10 past eight. Maybe we can start there. I can have a question if you have a question. Or remarks, a discussion, whatever you want. Thank you very much. Wow, it's challenging to present and learn stuff. <laughs> very nice, a plucket theory in 10 minutes is challenging. <laughs> yeah, I hope very it was clear enough. <laughs> yes, so yeah, very clear. And actually very good remark about the non-normal matrix, very useful in yeah. this moment of COVID things, uh, SRI model. Very interesting. So the students, well, well start uh, thanking uh, Timoteo first, uh, not to uh, forget to thank the speaker, uh, otherwise I, I forgot. So let's thank the speaker, open the microphone and let's thank the speaker, please. Thank you for listening. So uh, question, question, do not be shy. Oh, we are here to learn so you can ask question. Let's see if there is. I, I will share my slides uh, so I can send them by Stefania say tomorrow or tonight. Yeah. And uh, yes, then I will add some uh, references to book, uh, the one that I will give you, or some papers and so on if you're interested. But do not hesitate to ask me. Ask, you have my email. Uh, okay, it's not in this. Okay, I know. Maybe you cannot see my. You can see my email here. So you can write me and I can. Uh, you can have a chat. I can send you papers and so on. So. Do not hesitate. 
Any questions? They're shy. This. <laughs> yeah. Pode perguntar. <laughs> yeah, it, it can be in Spanish and Portuguese. I can try to understand, yeah. but I will ask. I will answer in English. Yes. Let's see. I try to see if there is a in the chat. Uh, I lost the chat on my screen, so I tried to uh, to the YouTube. But I lost YouTube in my screen, so so now they they are very they are very uh, silent. Well, it's the first lecture. They have to yeah, break okay, the yeah, ice. Okay. They have to break the ice every time. The second lecture, they they will be more uh, talkative. They, they they are a little bit shy. Victor's. No, no, I mean Victor speaking. Okay, but anyway, it was it was very clear. Thank you, thank you. It was okay. fantastic. Very thank you. Always. Thank you to you. Yes. So, so yeah, I mix together stuff that uh, normally, at least in Belgium, uh, taught at the second year, but also is stuff within the fourth year. So I I went across a CV, a curriculum in mathematics for almost two three years of study. So it can be that uh, not everything is clear enough because I really span two three years of research so no no it was very clear well, at least for me but, uh, okay so we can so if there are no questions we we, we let timoteo to to go to, for dinner you know okay. imagine <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's dinner time uh yes so igor he's looking for the next thank you yeah. igor uh, and uh, so we, we resume uh, next Thursday at the same time. So remember that the YouTube, I put YouTube just at two o'clock because I have to have the time to, to do this. Uh, and remember that you can ask questions. Here uh, uh, is an interactive uh, classroom. So uh, we are all here to learn. And so there is no, do not be afraid to ask questions. And, and Timoteo is a fantastic teacher. So I'm sure that he will be happy to have questions. Okay. If you want next time, you can start with a five minute question about the, the lecture of today, if, because uh, now you are, maybe you are receiving too many information at time. So yeah. you can uh, think of and uh, Thursday ask some question. Yeah, great. Okay. So, we, uh, we thank you, Matteo. And actually, I hope that uh, in the future, Glaston can give us a mini course on Poincare map. So to reinforce some of this, uh, <laughs> this, uh, this uh, what was spoken today. So see you all next Thursday. Thank okay. you once thank more, you. Timoteo, for the wonderful bye. lecture. So bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye bye to everyone.